I have said the bush line in the Safama College and IG, Facebook, and all social media. Share, like, and subscribe. It's a vibe. Push. Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. One of the continuous challenges I see out there in the field is farmers securing feed for their animals, especially during the post drought period. We're getting a little rainfalls now, so we're trying to get farmers now to store what is in excess. We're out in St. Thomas, and we can see that some farmers have it very difficult to get feed for their animals. We have to go in valleys and precipices just to secure feed for animals. And even myself to get to these farmers was a very rocky road but it's part of the job and it's pretty exciting sometimes to see how some farmers survive in some of these remote areas especially out in St. Thomas. Hi my name is Peter Gay Watson and today we are here in the hillside with a group of dairy farmers where we will be conducting a training on silage production and dairy nutrition with my small dairy farmers group. So this training is in collaboration with Hypro and Jamaica Dairy Development Board. The dairy, dairy Board has been supporting the small farmers in St. Thomas in a number of ways. We have established around 30 acres of improved fodder for the dairy farmers. Um, we have supplied them with animals on a loan basis. We have conducted several training to empower them and to have them better able to produce quality milk of high standard. Now, a major project which is in the pipeline is to have a milking parlor bill. And then after we have the milking parlor bill now, we're going to mechanize it where the, the, the farmers will be using machine to milk the animals and we hope to establish about five of these uh, milking parlor within within um, the hillside community Danvers Pen and the other areas so that's our main help to the small farmers for the meantime So we may have plan to teach you some simple techniques so we can use to improve production. 
where I think it's very important, but the highlight that I want to listen to me. Because once you no follow me, so I guarantee you, so I can get that five additional gallons. First, what kind of breed animal now? The hope. Mix. Mix. Mix up. Any holes here? Sometimes it go, sometimes it go down. Yeah. And it go up when you have more grass. Yes. How oh, oh, you stay, Papa? How oh, you stay, Papa? Ah! Uh, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me. It don't help me really steady stay, but what can I help me? I had it, um, two or five gallons of it. So, two, uh, at this time, you know, I'm like, I look a bit, look a bit at Africa, you know, me have to feed, me, it grows dark, you know, I have to buy it, you know, grab it. Like, like, you can't, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, I mean, you don't use the green, you don't use the green. You don't use the green, it doesn't use the green. You don't use the green, you can't use the green. Cast them more. Yeah, because they call them the green fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they use the feed. Oh, they use the mash. Yeah. The mash lasts longer. Yeah, they take longer feed. So by the time they don't eat it, they finish it. Alright, so this. But this we are talking about a balanced diet. And a balanced diet, how we want to achieve it is that we have to have minerals and vitamins in our feed. You guys know about that, where do you get that from? We have the salt block and the mineral block. Carbohydrates. Where do you get the carbohydrates from? I think your grass. Oh. Alright. So grass and your carbohydrates. Protein, where do you get your protein from? You know where you get the protein from? Same grass, same grains. Fiber. Where do you get the fiber from? Grass. So your carbohydrates and your fiber come from the grass. What else me see? Water. Well said. Yeah. About 80% of your milk. Yeah. Yeah. And water. So they provide water to an animal. Yeah, man, you have water, man. All right, good. So here we have it for this. I'm going to introduce you to the high pro program. We have calf starter. We have a calf grower. We have a heifer developer. And I guess you guys will do our focus on the dairy ration. We have a special formula called Surge Ration, which is basically a formula for Surge. And I think you guys should try it. And if it's a price problem, we can fix that. But now I'm selling the feed today. We're going to look for the face feeding program. This is how I want you guys to start operating from now. This part is very important. We have to break down the animal lactation in phases. And you have to feed them according to the phase. I'm saving by the bag feed and not make as much money and try to buy the mash. But you can buy a bag feed at a particular time for the animal feels for you make back money because that bag feed will drive milk production past way down. So at the first one, we call him the far off cow. Right? We now focus on that here. That's when you dry off the animal. Then. So we call the dry animal the far off cow. That's the first 45 days. Then we have the close up cow, which is 21 days. It is three weeks before the animal give birth, right? We want to start feeding the animal differently. We we'll go into it. Then we have the fresh cow. It's the first two weeks. So after them give birth, they start milk to the calf area to start milk. Then we have the peak milk, which is 14 days to 18 days. That is when we want you start giving some back. Because at that point, you can push milk production no, higher up to make financial sense. So you really are pumping more feed of them because they're not going to give you any more milk. So I break this down into stages now. So we're going to focus on the fresh cow. After the last one. Right? How much grass you give your animal for the day? You have an idea? <laughs> If I want to leave just a two cow and a half, just ensure you give them that amount of pounds a day and look and then see if you know, think you can change your system a little bit to get more money out. How I want you guys to do it, that's why I have the silage today, is that silage going to be in your new program. Your grains or your mash, what you call it, and you run them to pastures. But you see this animal, what I call the fresh cow, which is the first. 21 days, I'll allow you to give them as much silage as possible with grapes. So you increase the milk kilo you can get out of them. And that now will tear them off at that peak. After that 21 days done now, you can kind of cut back on the silage. 
to them go to pasture and feed them little grain the same way. But when they reach your 200 day, you can remove the silage from them. So if you have a herd with say five animals, the one them way in a late lactation, you don't have to give them no silage. You can reduce the amount of grains. Right? Because we are trying to see it. But the one them with just start milk, them you want to give everybody. You can, you can do that. You can have, I see you have the infrastructure to can do that. I said, boy, them two come here who are the first time milk because I can separate them and feed them differently. I just run everybody and everybody eat out of one. You ask me. Run everybody. You run everybody. Yeah. So you see a little technique where you can do to get more milk out of somebody. That is what some of these commercial farms do. Same search. They break them up into groups. So you have group one. Group one is 120 days go straight back. Group one get fed differently from group two. Because they might try to push the milk here for the group one because they are fresh milk cuts. So they can do that in the same small operation. And you see way more milk kill out of it. You know. I guarantee you that. Try that. Give them the bag feed when I tell you. The 50 pounds. Feed a set where you know just start milk differently from the one that is in late lactation. And check your pocket at the end. So, alright, we're going to talk about a lot of things today. Pasture management are one of them. Father conservation, Father conservation is what we're practicing today. We're going to teach you how to make silage. We're going to look at some of the grass that you have. You guys are going to tell me. I'm going to go down on a big detail. You're going to tell me, say, this is what I have access to. That look like either elephant grass or king grass. Let's make sure it's the volume what is important. I can tell you one of the major problems they have is the consumption. It's what you call dry matter intake. Yeah. Animal is not consuming enough, they won't give you the milk. And I don't think us as farmers really understand what they consume. You know? We just let them go. We're not taking the consideration to what is their business and they need a certain amount you can give us. We can open up. And one of the most important things that you guys have to take into consideration is heat stress. So what heat stress do? Whenever I go surgery, they them have the shady part and build thing for them. You know why them do that? When you hot or you feel miserable. You yeah. see them so the cold them feel when they miserable. So when they're miserable, you know what do to them? Make them stop eating. Because they're in a one phase you now where they try to balance them body with the heat. So when they could have go out there and eat that 30 pound of grass, they probably say go out there and eat 15 pound. And once they're not eating that amount, they now get the milk. So we have to try to find a way to keep them comfortable. So what I say too is that we have a lot of trees here in St. Thomas, a lot of shade. Sometimes we have to be with feeding trough right underneath the tree. So the animals then can eat under the shade. And that makes them more comfortable. Make them eat more. And you get more milk. You now work with me? Yeah. We have to pay attention now to what is really going on. We call it climate smart strategies. So one, who find the weather, who have the weather on them phone? You know, watching the phone and see if it's going to rain and know what it is for the day. Good, you will have the farmers tree and plant it out. It does to provide shade, a traditional tree. And at the same time, you could have make some money off it. It was like Aki and so on. When the Aki come up, you can make money off of the Aki. So it diversify your whole income. That is something that you guys can still do. No animal them. You can always see, you see that one? Even when the sun has shine, you still out at the pasture and eat grass. So you see that animal? You want to eat that animal off spread. Why? We call it genetic selection. In clearly have some way called heat tolerance. So we want to start select these animals that we see can manage the heat better. Not just any animal we see boy when it hot and you run out the shade and not eat it. The one we see out there when the sun 12 o'clock and you still eat, that animal is a good animal to keep on your farm. So the next thing we important now is the different grasses. A lot of different grasses where we are. Um, see the king grass there at the bottom. And then you know you have elephant grass that look very similar. You have nepa grass that look very similar. And you have guinea grass. So we want to basically know when is the best time to cut this grass. 
especially if you do a cut and carry system like what we see going on right you can just go cut it any and any time that makes no sense to you because you want to capture the grass when it has the most nutrients but today we have to do some manual packing there's nothing wrong with that dear board of the machine that can carry come to everybody farm one by one and they can back 500 bag one day and that might save one all right so see the man there that man mr reynolds challenge him to carry the machine come show you the machine work make your life easy right mr reynolds i'm feeding sharks on them farm how you feed them the grain well, no, for the food, we'll cut. The five, five gallon, gallon, five gallon bucket, and that and that for one animal. Yeah, one. So for one, add a five gallon bucket to an animal, and not three animal or two animal to one. move from the five gallon to the big twenty five gallon. And them come eat a lot, you know. Five gallon bucket. May I tell you? Who no can man? Who no can? What what? Fear giving farmers the urea version because they overuse it and a man yeah, going drop true. down dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I promote that. No, not until when we master this, then we can think about if we're willing to follow the instructions. When we see the follow the instructions them properly, then we can say they might can take the instructions for the nitrogen. Right, Mr. Reynolds, we see you have something to say. Talk Last to time we had that same. <laughs> 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 yeah, Last time we had that nitrogen training to use it to improve the protein content of the feed. Um, I don't know if it's by bad management, but one farmer lost a cow. The animal just eat, 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 and just drop. Yeah. Dead. All right, guys. You see why we're not promoting it? We're not promoting it right now. Watch around, remember say 12. If I 12 pound in there, then I would show some car members say 12 and 12 are 24. So, and a 22 pound scale.
good representation from the farmer group and whatever we learn today, we hope we will put it in practice and we will see some fridges, money, more <laughs> milk. Sooner or later. A good one. I don't know how to express this gratitude to Khalil for really coming out to really show us the process of, process of a silent production. I really, really appreciate your assistance, Mr. No problem. And we hope to celebrate more you and your team. No, no. As well as there is more, we should be doing some more work.